Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. have now reached to lecture number 15 which is based on alternate mordants and auxiliaries. We have seen the use of mordants, how many ways it has been used, what are the drawbacks, what are the advantages and now we are moving on to other mordants which were not mentioned in the previous lecture. Non-conventional or alternative mordants Natural dyes enthusiasts and artists often explore to experiment with different colors and effects. Some of these non-conventional moderns include soya milk as mentioned earlier also in my previous lecture that this auxiliary section soya mi milk contains proteins that can act as binder helping to fix natural dyes to the fabric. It is per particularly popular in vegan or plant based dyeing. Those who do not want to use uh, you know there is a set of people who are vegan and they do not uh, want to harm any animal and there this soya milk is something that they can use as a binder. Even milk similar to soya milk regular cow's milk can be used as a mordant. The proteins in the milk can assist in binding the dye to the fibers. Pickle juice, the acidity of the pickle juice that is vinegar based can be used to shift colors especially with certain plant based dyes. Remember these are very non-conventional alternatives. It is an unconventional option for creating unique shades. People have used all kinds of material solutions, different types of milks in order to get different shades, color and hue. Alternate mordants that have been used are seaweed. Some seaweeds contain natural modern pro properties. They can be used to treat fibers before dyeing to enhance color uptake. Urine. Historically also we saw that cow urine was used. Urine can be used as a modern due to its ammonia content. While not a popular choice today, it has been employed traditionally in some cultures of wool dyeing. Fermented solution. Fermented substances such as fermented fruits, vegetables or other plant materials can be used to create mordant like effect. The acidic or alkaline nature of the fermented solution may influence the dyeing process. So, people have used all kinds of things wherever they could lay their hands on and whatever could make a difference to the color shade. Ferrous Sulphate has been used popularly as modern, but people have even used ferrous acetate as alternate mordants. This is a combination of iron and vinegar. It can be used as an alternative to traditional iron mordants to shift and darken color. Another alternate mordant is aluminum acetate. Created by con combining aluminum acetate with vinegar, this can act as a mordant for some natural dyes. It is less commonly used than alum, but can produce very interesting results. Dung. In some traditional practices, cow dung, camel dung and dung from certain animals have been used as mordants. This is less common today due to hygienic concern. Wine. The tannin present 
in wine, especially in red wine, can also act as mordant. It can be used to modify and deepen the color. So, there are several alternate mordants which people have practiced, which are not of common occurrence and not of common practice. Some of the common chemical ones which have been used as mordants as well. Mordants are substances that help bind the dye to the fiber, while auxiliaries are additional chemicals used to modify or improve the dyeing process. Here are some alternatives, mordants and auxiliaries commonly used in natural dyeing. Soda ash is one of them, sodium carbonate used to create an alkaline environment Soda ash is often employed with dyes like indigo to enhance color development. Salt, sodium chloride, commonly used as an auxiliary with fiber reactive dyes. It can help improve color uptake and fastness. Washing soda, sodium carbonate can be used as a scouring agent to prepare fibers for dyeing, especially with plant based fibers like cotton and linen. So, salt and soda ash, these and soda uh, sodium uh, carbonate, these are some very common chemicals which have been found to make a difference in natural dyeing, can act as a mordant, can act as a modifier. Some unconventional moderns are soya bean lecithin acts as a protein binder helping to fix the dye to the fabric. It is commonly used with natural dyes on plant based fibers. Tannic acid derived from plant sources, tannic acid can be used as an auxiliary to modify colors and improve the uptake of certain dyes chalk, calcium carbonate used to increase the pH of the dye bath, particularly the dyes that require an alkaline environment. So, tannic acid we have come across and we know that it acts as an auxiliary as well as it is good color modifier, but chalk was something which was not mentioned ever before. But calcium carbonate also can act as a good mordant. However, there is a you know certain amount of uncertainty with unconventional mordants because not much experimentation has gone into it, not many people are practicing it. As a result, when experimenting with non conventional mordants, it is important to be aware of potential limitations such as color fastness and the long term effect on the fabric. You know we cannot use any and everything, even you know we have to consciously use these mordants in optimal quantity. Additionally, safety and hygiene consideration should always be kept in mind, testing on small swatches before applying unconventional moderns to larger projects is a good practice. You know before we you know start dyeing on larger volumes of fabric, it is always better to uh, you know do it on small swatches. Always keep in mind that the choice of moderns and auxiliary can vary based on the type of fiber you are dyeing whether you are dyeing wool, cotton or silk, the specific dye you are using and the desired outcome that you wish to have. Additionally, it is important to follow safety guidelines when working with certain moderns as some of the, them are toxic in concentrated form, particularly chromium and potassium and potassium dichromate. Use of uh, enzymes in natural dyeing. 
what we have started experiencing that can we reduce the metal, can we remove the metal and we found that enzymes which were attempted for the first time for natural dyeing by our research group can do that for us. So, enzymes are biological molecules that act as catalysts speeding up chemical reactions. In natural dyeing when we started using it enzymes became modifiers and they could modify fiber and enhance the fixation of the color from the plant extract. So, they became like color modifier. Color modification could be done by enzyme and they could intensify the color obtained from natural dyes. This is often achieved by applying enzymes to the dyed fabric in specific condition leading to changes in the color or shade. So, what we found that it was definitely modifying or enhancing the color if an enzyme pretreatment was done in place of a metal mordant. We even made comparison of a fabric being mordanted with alum and an, the same fabric being mordanted in another piece with an enzyme and we dipped in the same dye extract to see the result and we found that the k by s value for the enzyme was almost at par with the k by s value of the alum mordanted swatch. Enzymes are eco friendly reducing impact environmental impact. Enzymatic processes in natural dyeing are often considered more environmentally friendly compared to traditional chemical methods. They can reduce the need for harsh chemicals and energy intensive processes. Use of enzyme in natural dyeing can be considered as they being biomoderns. Processes to enhance the color fastness and overall effectiveness of natural dyes on the fabric. Moderns are substances that are used to fix or set the dyes on the fibers and they play a crucial role in natural dyeing to improve the color intensity, durability, wash fastness and light fastness. And can the enzyme do the same is the next question. And yes, it was found to be better in many ways than the metal moderns. They showed improved penetration of the dye. Enzymes such as proteases, amylases can be employed for pretreatment of fabric before dyeing, particularly for silk and wool. This enzymatic treatment helps remove impurities such as waxes, oils and proteins from the fabric surface. By doing so, enzymes create a more porous and receptive surface allowing natural dye to penetrate the fiber more effectively. They become fiber modifiers. Enzymes can modify the structure of the fiber making them more amenable to dye absorption. For instance, enzymes can break down certain compounds in the fibers that might hinder dye uptake. This modification facilitates better interaction between the natural dye molecule and the fabric. So, that means that they be, they can go beyond the role of a mordant and of course, they are eco friendly. So, from the eco friendly approach perspective as compared to the traditional chemical mordants, 
enzyme offer an eco-friendly alternative. They are generally biodegradable and can be more sustainable reducing the environmental impact of the dyeing process. They are gentle in treatment. Enzymatic processes are often milder than chemical treatments. This gentler approach can be particularly beneficial for delicate fabrics like silk, where the damage caused by the harsh chemical mordants can be avoided. There are many beneficial effects of enzymes. They are not only helping in color enhancement, but they also reduce the environmental impact. Enzymes can enhance the color intensity of the natural dyes by optimizing the condition for dyeing. The improved penetration and fiber modification facilitated by enzyme can lead to more vibrant and long lasting colors. It can create reduced environmental impact as what I mentioned a while ago. Enzymes can be advantageous in reducing the environmental impact of the dyeing process. Their use can minimize the use of polluting traditional mordants like chromium and copper. When using enzymes as biomordants in natural dyeing, it is essential to consider factors such as temperature, pH and duration of the treatment to optimize the enzymatic process for specific fibers and dyes. Now, because enzymes are proteinaceous material, they are susceptible for uh, you know getting destroyed at high temperature and high pH, they get coagulated or coiled or denatured. Now, one has to remember that all the enzymatic ac actions or reactions should be done at ambient temperature, at buffer solutions and so on. Additionally, thorough rinsing and neutralization steps may be necessary to ensure that residual enzymes do not affect the final color or the texture of the dyed fabric. So, of course, the enzymes are used in very, very small quantities in 0.5 percent solution. So, their residual uh, remaining on the fiber or fa fabric is a little like unlikeliness. However, there is a main issue with enzyme. Not every enzyme is compatible with every dye, because we know dye has a certain structure and enzyme also has a certain structure. It is like a lock and key arrangement. When a proper key is put in the lock, only then the lock opens. Similarly, when a, a dye is totally suitable for a particular enzyme, then only it will show its effectivity in color enhancement and adherence. So, as an auxiliary improving dye penetration, enzyme can play an auxiliary role by improving the penetration of the dye into the fibers undoubtedly, leading to more uniform and vibrant color. When using enzyme in natural dyes, it is crucial to consider factors such as enzyme type, concentration, temperature and pH as these parameters can influence the outcome of the dyeing process. Additionally, enzymes are specific to certain types of compound. So, choosing the right enzyme for the desired effect is essential and in a while from now, I will show you that when we tested with several enzyme, only one of them showed best result and we will discuss that in a little later. 
As with any dyeing process, it is advisable to conduct small scale tests before applying enzymatic treatments to larger projects. Now, in this table where you know several natural dyes have been taken Rheum, Imodi, Terminalia, Arjuna, Punica, Granitum, Tectona Grandis and Acacia Catechu. These were treated on cotton using sonication step first giving a tannic acid treatment and when the first column was treated samples were treated with lipase enzyme. The second after tannic acid treatment was treated was diesterase and the third one was treated after tannic acid with protease and amylase combination. We found that among the three methods that were adapted for Rheum Imodi, the best result was obtained for tannic acid and lipase. That means, lipase is most suited for Rheum Imodi and it is most compatible. Similarly, when we did a test with Terminalia Arjuna, we found that lipase again was the best choice because it showed 54.45 percent of dye uptake. But when we did with Punica granitum, we found that protease and amylase enzyme was better as compared to the lipase and diesterase. In the example of Tectona grandis, it was diesterase which was best suited. Lipase and protease and amylase with Tectona did not give good results. In the case of Catechu, we found that the best result was again obtained by protease and amylase combination of enzyme. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that for cotton tannic acid was a common treatment that was done. But after that tannic acid treatment, when we treated it with enzyme lipase, diesterase and protease and amylase, we found that different dyes showed different compatibility with different enzymes. And this is something that I wanted to draw your attention because this dye compatibility is a very major factor. Effect of enzyme in natural dyeing. All the three enzymes when used in conjunction with tannic acid were found to enhance the dyeability of the five different natural dyes. Enhancement of dye uptake in case of Punica, Rheum, Terminalia by ultrasonification was 17 percent, 18 percent and 28 percent respectively. It was observed that Punica with lipase, Rheum with protease and amylase and Terminalia with lipase enzyme gives best calori calorimetric data on dyeing. Tectona grandis with diesterase and Acacia catechu with protease and amylase gives best calorimetric data on dyeing by one step methodology. So, this was tannic acid was added into the dye bath and it was the data that was generated from that. So, conclusion from the enzyme effectivity is However, best calorimetric data on dyeing by two step method step methodology for Punica was lipase, Rheum was with protease and amylase and Terminalia was with lipase, Tectona grandis was with diesterase and Acacia catechu was with protease and amylase. Even the fastness properties in all these show good results. So, two different methods were adopted for this experiment. One was one step and the other one was two step. The one step and tannic acid enzyme dye developed for the ease of industrial application 
offers an equal eco friendly process which would be popularized as an alternate method to the tannic acid metal complex uh, metal modern complex dye method. This is a definite step towards cleaner production in the area of natural dyeing where effluent management requires special attention. So, in this experiments we have tried to show that how these uh, you know replacement of metal mordant with enzyme has worked very well. We have done an elaborate study of first treating the fabric with tannic acid and then doing the enzyme treatment and in another case we put the enzyme in the same dye bath and we carried out the dyeing in one pot and both the both of them gave very good results which goes to show that the dye uptake does get enhanced by the presence or by the treatment of enzyme. The enzymes popularly that we used were protease, amylase, diesterase, lipase and along with that we used tannic acid. So, the same way as what we used tannic acid and metal mordant, here we have used the combination of tannic acid enzyme dye combination offering an eco friendly environmentally benign alternative to metal mordanting in natural dyeing. And these combination of uh, enzymes have really worked very well showing specific compatibility with specific dyes. In another study where we have done uh, I mean we have used enzymes two step ultrasonic dyeing of cotton and silk were carried out by Terminalia, Punica and Riem Imodi have been developed in which the enzyme is complex with tannic acid first as a pretreatment. This was found to be comparable with one step simultaneous dyeing. The effectiveness of three enzymes the protease amylase combination diesterase and lipase was determined. The enzymatic pretreatment was gave cotton and silk fabric rapid dye absorption kinetics and total higher ab adsorption than untreated samples of all the three dyes. The C lab values also showed improvement by enzymatic treatment the tannic acid enzyme dye combination method offers an environmentally benign alternative soft chemistry to the metal modented natural dyeing. So, what we have tried to prove in these experiments that it is possible to dye natural dyes with cotton and silk using tannic acid and enzyme combination in place of tannic acid and metal mordant and it works very well. And in another case where we use catechu and tectona, we did another experiment where we did without enzyme with protease and lipase and diesterase and we found that for catechu it was the combination of protease and amylase enzyme which gave 86, 87 percent dye uptake. Hence, it is recommended as the best result. In the case of Tectona grandis without enzyme it showed only 25 percent dye uptake, but with diesterase it gave 81 percent of dye uptake under sonication condition. So, what I am trying to draw your attention that not only dye enzyme compatibility is there, but dye uptake is as good as what we achieve in metal modented steps. Then we moved on to another very interesting class of mordants which I have called them as bio mordants because they are mordants which are derived from plants. 
Rubia cordifolia produces anthroquinone reddish orange dye in the roots and stems and leaves which we have used for natural dyeing of textile and this has been used since ancient times. Commercial sonicating sonicator dyeing with rubia showed that pretreatment with a mordant plant urea acuminata DC var uprisca karth that is from the the theasi family shows very good fastness properties of dyed cotton using dry powder as 10 percent weight of the fabric in optimum. Now, what does this mean that along with rubia cordifolia plant parts, plant called urea acuminata was co-extracted. Use of biomordant replaces metal mordanting step completely and this plant was then co-extracted with rubia stems to get the same effect as what we were getting from a separate metal mordanting step. Now, why this was happening, how this was happening was not understood. This tribe, a Patani tribe of northeast in Arunachal Pradesh were just mixing these two plants and co-extracting them and the extract was directly filtered and used as it is. They were not doing any mordanting step. So, we brought this plant back to the laboratory in feed lab in IIT Kanpur and we started analyzing. Urea acuminata was found to have a small fraction of plant species taking up high levels of alum, aluminum in their above ground tissues. Generally plants are classified as accumulators if they accumulate at least 1000 milligram per kilogram in their leaves or in any other part of their uh, plant body. The extract of urea acuminata leaves is found to contain substantial amount of aluminum. Atomic absorption spectroscopic analysis showed that the leaves had 11.767 milligram per liter of aluminum content and copper in 0.1 gram per 100 gram in pyrus pastia. So, these, this, these were two biomodents which we identified which were being used by them without understanding the chemistry. What we tried to find out that why these plants are helping in the natural dyeing of rubia and what is the chemistry in the other plant which is make or behaving like a biomodent and enhancing the dyeing property. These amounts are good enough to carry out the chelation of the dye molecules, yet the effluent on polluting becomes non-polluting for the environment because they are in such small quantities that is milligram of you know 11.76 milligram in 1 liter of the extract. So, this is a greener approach if we are using biomodents. Two new sources of mordants, biomodants called urea acuminata and pastia were used. Enzymes such as cellulase, protease, diesterase, amylase, lipase and tryptans have been used. Both the biomodents have proved their potential as future moderns as well as making whole dyeing process a greener one. Because you know we have understood that metals have to be used for natural dyeing or rather I would say moderns have to be used for natural dyeing. There is no way out if we want good color fastness, if we want good color adherence, if we want good you know light and wash fastness 
then we have to use a mordant. Now, that mordant now what we have established could not necessarily be the metal mordant, but it can be a bio mordant or an enzyme and that is what we have proven through our research. Now, what happens? The chelation of the anthraquinone moiety are for rubia cordifolia. This is the structure of rubia cordifolia and the alum aluminum can uh, attach either on one side of the carbonyl or on the other side of the two hydroxyl. So, the high aluminum content has been suggested to provide useful chelation to the anthroquinone moiety of the plant rubia cordifolia at two different sites, one with carbonyl and hydroxyl and the other with dihydroxyl moieties as shown in this slide. So, it is very clear that although the aluminum is in very small quantities, yet it is doing the function of chelation which is its primary function and that it is acting as a bridging head between the colorant and the fiber. When we try to compare the same rubia extract by using alum pretreated and then dyed and the other one with biomodin pretreated or rather biomodin co uh, you know extracted with dye we found this result the dye uptake was almost close to double now that means that external alum treatment by modenting pre modenting is not even half the uh, you know uh, half as good as if if the urea accumulata is co extracted with rubia for the uh, cordifolia stems so this is what proves that we were going in the right direction, we were finding a better solution for metal mordenting. Ruba, rubia cordifolia alone can give so many shades by using different enzymes and different metal salts. And you can see that we have a choice, if you look at the cotton or the silk or the wool series the shades are quite close and they have been used where all these control are on the left hand side and the modented one are on the right hand side. Alum, copper sulphate, ferrous sulphate, stannous chloride enzymes have been used and we have used sorry these metal mordants have been used enzymes have been used and then we have used urea acuminata and pyrus pascia which are biomodents. So, we have done a holistic study of this dye rubia cordifolia tried to show that if you look at the first sample modented by alum and the sample urea modented by urea acuminata you will see that the color depth of that is much deeper. I can take many examples and show you the comparison that cotton was treated with cellulase enzyme, silk was treated with protease enzyme and wool was treated with trypsin enzyme. And this is the result or outcome of the uh, entire natural dyeing process showing shown by rubia cordifolia dye. Another example we have taken where we have shown that eclipta alba is another plant whose extract is very good for dyeing and you see that the results obtained with alum and the results obtained with urea acuminata are far 
you know deeper. Similarly, if we try to do uh, these experiments with silk and wool, similar darkening is seen only in the case of ferrous sulphate the samples are darker, uh, but on the conventional side on the sonicator side you can see there are different kinds of shades that are available, but most of this time the enzyme ones are darker in color as compared to the metal modented ones. So, if we can rightly say that we have reached a stage of maturity where we can vouch for the natural dyers to take up enzymatic treatment or usage of acuminata, urea acuminata and pyreus pastia as a safer alternative to metal mordanting. Other biomordants used by other people uh, and some by us in natural dyeing, biomordants are substances derived from biological sources that are used to improve the color fastness and adherence of natural dyes to fabric. These biomordants can be obtained from various plant sources. Biomordants commonly used in natural dyeing are tannins. Of course, we have been talking about tannins for quite some time now. Tannins are polyphenolic compounds found in plant material such as oak gall, sumac, myrobalan and pomegranate. They help in to fix natural dyes to fibers and also contribute to color fastness. Rhubarb leaves. The oxalic acid content in rhubarb leaves can be used as a mordant for natural dyes. However, caution should be taken as rhubarb leaves are toxic and should be handled very carefully and optimally. Other biomodern sources are pomegranate peel because pomegranate peel also has a lot of tannin. So, Pomegranate peel contains tannin and can be used both as a source of tannin as well as modern. They are also used as dye in natural dyeing. Guava leaves. Guava leaves are known to contain tannins and the tannins are substances that can act as natural mordants in the natural in the dyeing process. Tannins have the ability to bind with both the fibers of the fabric and the dye molecules, enhancing the color fastness of the dye. While guava leaves may not be as commonly used as some other traditional biomodants, they can still be employed in natural dyeing processes. Additionally, sustainable and eco-friendly practices are encouraged in the selection and use of biomodants. So, one has to pick and choose there are lot of natural products that are available which can be used as moderns and these natural products if they have been identified that they have any metal content like as in the case of urea acuminata and pyreus pascha, one can use them because they have the inherent metal content which is just the right amount which is required for chelation of the dye to the fabric. Another thing that we practice is double dyeing in natural dyeing. Double dyeing is possible in natural dyeing and refers to the process of dyeing a fabric or material twice using different sources of natural dyes or same dye with different mordants, substances used to fix the natural dye on the fabric. This technique offers several benefits, color variation and depth. Double dyeing allows for the creation of unique colors and shades by layering different dyes or using the same dye with different mordants. This results in richer, more complex hues and greater depth of color compared to single dye processes. Color fastness. 
by applying multiple layer of dye, the color tends to penetrate deeper into the fabric fibers, improving color fastness and resistance to fading, washing and light exposure. Customization, double dyeing offers greater flexibility and customization in achieving desired colors and effects. By experimenting with different combinations of dyes and moderns, artisans can create a wide range of tones and hues, allowing for more creative expression and uniqueness in the final product. So, there is a lot of flexibility that can happen. Benefits of double dyeing, enhance texture and visual interest. Layering different dyes or employing different moderns can create interesting visual effect such as mottling, marbling or subtle variation in color intensity adding depth and texture to the fabric. What waste reduction? Double dyeing can also be effective way to utilize leftover dye solution from previous dyeing sessions thereby minimizing waste and maximizing resource efficiency. Eco-friendliness, natural dyes are often derived from plant sources which are renewable and biodegradable. By using natural dyes and minimizing the use of synthetic dyes, double dyeing can contribute to more sustainable and eco-friendly dyeing practices. Cultural and traditional significance. In many cultures, double dyeing techniques have been passed down through generation as part of traditional textile craft. Contributing to the preservation of cultural heritage and artisanal skill is also our social responsibility. Overall, double dyeing in natural dyeing offers artisans and designers a versatile and sustainable approach to achieving beautiful, durable and unique colors and effects on textile. So, this is a very, very interesting domain where double dyeing can give another set of beautiful colors which we, which is even beyond our imagination. Double dyeing effect, a study with three dyes, different dyes like Punica, Granitum, Terminalia, Arjuna and Catechia, Acacia, Catechu was used in combination with natural indigo dye. Pure silk and cotton swatches were first dyed by above three dyes and then re-dyed by indigo through VAT method, which gave beautiful shades of bluish green and shining dark green. It has also been observed that mordenting with five different inorganic salt produced different shades from indigo dyeing. C lab values and K by S values have shown excellent reflectance values on the fact. The light and washing fastness of the diet samples were also evaluated giving fair to excellent fastness grades, especially washing fastness after indigo dyeing gave very good results. It has been observed that combination of punica, acacia and terminalia with indigo has produced a diverse array of shades different to their native shades on fabric. This assortment of shades and fastness grades may be useful for textile dyeing industry both for cotton and silk fabrics. And here we will see that how when it is only catechu, these are different 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are different moderns, biomoderns, enzymes that have been used but the process remains the same that it is either dyed with one dye 
and then when it is dyed with indigo, the same browns have changed into a different set of browns and that is the beauty of double dyeing with these uh, dyes. So, what it means is that double dyeing can make all the difference and when we try to do re dyeing, then it adds on to the color. So, in this lecture, let us recapitulate what all we learnt because these this lecture was dedicated mainly to alternate moderns and auxiliaries and therefore, we spoke at length about the different types of alternatives that were used by people like soya milk, milk, cow dung and many other such including calcium carbonate, many unknown and common chemicals also like sodium chloride was also used, sodium carbonate was used by a lot of people to get different results. But our consistent results we have shared about biomoderns and enzymes and they have given very good results and we have recommended that now metal moderns can be completely removed from the scenario. We no, do not need because the similar results can be obtained from natural dyeing by using biomoderns and by using enzymes. And we then also understood that not every enzyme is compatible with the every dye and that compatibility test definitely we have to carry out because once that is established then we can tell that this recipe is now ready for commercialization. And we saw that how one particular dye with different enzymes showed different dye uptake and the best results were considered as to be the most compatible enzyme for that particular dye. This kind of study was never done before. So, it is for the first time that we did this study and we are very happy that the results that we got are worth you know uh, uh, for the industry to take up and they are ready for commercialization. Another thing that we found that the tribal people were using some plant to co-extract with some other plant without understanding the chemistry. Of course, their knowledge of science was not so developed, so they, therefore, they would not know the chemistry. But when we started looking at these plants, we started analyzing these plants and we found that there is inherent aluminum 11.76 percent or 0 0.01 percent of copper in py pyrus pastia. We understood that that is what is making all the difference because we could avoid the modenting step and we could conveniently then uh, you know go on to do the dyeing. So, if we can co extract the plant for the colorant and the modent biomodent then we are minimizing one major step of modenting. And for an industrial process, it is far more beneficial. The lesser the number of step, the better it is for the process. So, therefore, these processes which we have developed have great commercial significance and therefore, we should promote them and we should practice them more and more. More number of dyes should be actually screened for the compatibility of the enzymes. More number of such hyper accumulative plants should be screened for their metal, metal content and if they have any of these common metals like al aluminum, copper or chromium or tin, then they can be good source of biomodents and they can be co-extracted when we are doing the extraction process of naturally natural dye plant source. 
So, there is a whole lot of chemistry that can be studied, that can be understood and that can be practiced. It is only a matter of trying to now do this process in a very careful manner, because what happens is that when we do research, it is not for our own self. We are doing it for artisans, we are doing it for commercialization of the natural dyers and they should practice it and it should be scaled up from the laboratory scale to the uh, you know commercial dyeing centers. And people are doing it because there have been many examples where people are trying to use these uh, methods which we have published in very good journals and they are being cited very well. The idea is not about what we did, the idea is that these processes are now available and they are to be practiced. Natural dyeing need not necessarily require any more of the separate metal mordenting step. One can easily choose an enzyme or one can easily choose a hyper accumulative plant which can have aluminum, tin, iron or copper inherent in them. That quantity itself is sufficient. So, what we are we have learnt in this lesson, in this lecture is that there are alternative moderns, there are bio moderns, there are enzymes which can be used with natural dyes and so, we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.